This video introduces matrices in R. Matrices are two-dimensional arrays. I thought it'd be interesting to introduce matrices in R with an actual common use case. And a good example of that is computing a portfolio variance. So this video has two parts. In the first part, I'll use Excel to show you the mechanics of how we calculate portfolio variance, in this case, where the portfolio has four assets. And then I'll switch over to R and I'll get the same result using the matrix functions in R. My hypothetical portfolio consists of four assets, A through D. And in this scenario, they happen to be equally weighted. So my weights are 25% per asset, and they would need to sum to 100%. And then over a single week, that's five trading days, I've manufactured round daily returns for each of these assets. So that at the end of the week, you can see here denoted sigma, I've computed the daily standard deviation or daily volatility using Excel's standard deviation function, but I'm gonna round to three decimal places. So I have for each of these assets, a daily volatility, admittedly on a small and hypothetical sample. Also, because I have these daily returns, I can compute the pairwise correlation for the returns for each of these assets. For example, this here, this cell, 0.95346, you can see if I highlight, is the pairwise correlation of returns between assets A and C. And so in terms of this correlation matrix, it's betrayed by a diagonal that must have values of one. After all, the correlation of C with itself, that's an identity, must be one. So your correlation matrix needs to have one in the diagonal. Also, only the upper or lower triangle is unique, right? Here is A with C. That 0.95346 must be the same as C with A. Their correlations are symmetric. So I have here the unique pairwise values in the correlation matrix that I'm going to denote with a capital R, suggesting it is a matrix, and it needs to be square, four by four. So having established the ingredients here, I'm going to now proceed with the matrix math to retrieve or calculate this cell in orange, which is the portfolio volatility or portfolio standard deviation sigma sub P, subscript P itself. The portfolio volatility is a square root here of the portfolio variance. And you can see I've got the matrix notation for that, the portfolio variance. That's subscript P sigma squared is going to be equal to, it's the product of three matrices, or specifically in the middle, we have the covariance matrix denoted as pretty typical here with an uppercase sigma. And then we post multiply by the weight vector. And that's in blue over here happens to be that, that assumption here of equally weighted portfolio, 25%. So you can see here in blue, that's a column vector or four rows by one column. Post multiply covariance matrix times the column vector of weights and then pre-multiply here in front that same weight vector, but transposed. So I could denote that with a superscript T, same vector, but transposed here. So we have three matrices, if you will, or a matrix in the middle and the weight, the same weight vector on either side, but we do need to post multiply first. This is the matrix form for the portfolio variance. And you can see here, uh, uppercase sigma in my case is right here, the values for that covariance matrix in light green. And it itself, I just decided to break this down fully in case you want to retrieve the uh, worksheet and really see how this works. Because the if you're from, more familiar with two asset, uh, the two asset portfolio, then a very common um, relationship is the covariance between A and B is equal to the volatility of A multiplied by the volatility of B multiplied by, I'm using Greek row now, the correlation between A and B. An essential fundamental identity here that covariance is equal to the product of volatilities and correlation 
Of course, we could divide this side by these volatilities and we get correlation expressed as covariance standardized into its unitless value. But so this is the two asset covariance formula that many are familiar with. Well, all we have here really is the matrix version of this where you can see this covariance matrix itself. Uppercase sigma is the product of uh, D, R, and D, and that really is volatility, correlation, volatility. See, volatility, correlation, volatility. And in keeping with this uppercase to denote matrices, right, I have R, capital R, is that correlation matrix, and then D is the volatilities, but specifically, it's a diagonal matrix, right? So you can see I colored these in purple. Those are the sigmas I calculated the daily volatilities, but they get converted into a diagonal matrix here, which simply means that they occupy the diagonal, everything else is zero. So here I have D and R, and then the covariance matrix is then just the, the diagonal matrix consisting of volatilities multiplied by the correlation, multiplied again, which I'm not showing here for space, again by another, the same diagonal matrix, D times R times D, is equal to my covariance matrix. And if I strip this out, you can see here using the array formula, that's in fact what I've done. I'm using the um, M MOLT function in Excel to return for me this covariance matrix. So in terms of the construction here of the portfolio variance right here, my first step is that post multiplication, you can see here sigma, the covariance matrix in green, multiplied by, I drew this small, this narrow blue line just to visually suggest that I'm using the W vector here, right? So what we have here, sigma times the vector of weights, right? We really have a uh, four by four is my covariance matrix, and we're multiplying that by this weight vector here, W, which is four rows by one column. And so in matrix multiplication, you know, visually, I think of that as these canceling and we end up with a four row by one vector, which is right here. That's my post multiplication. And my final step is just to pre-multiply that by that same weight vector, but transposed. So that, right, if I take the, I'm taking the transposed weight vector, that's a one by four, one row, four columns, and I'm multiplying it now by this column vector here, which is four rows, one column. Then I get my single value here, and now I'll just erase this text, and so you can see, that's my matrix multiplication of the transposed weights multiplied by this column vector itself, the product of the covariance matrix and the weights, and I get the portfolio variance. In this case, a small value as typical. We take the square root and we get the portfolio volatility of 1.76%. So this is the math now I'm going to do in R. So I have here my R notebook file open, environment panel to the right, console panel below, and then I just have a few bullets, which I think are the essentials that you want to know for matrices in R. First here is if we multiply matrices with the asterisk, that's shift eight, which is what we usually do with scalars. That's how we usually think of multiplication. We're going to get an element wise multiplication. Oftentimes, that's not what we want in this portfolio variance calculation. We want to do what I think of as true matrix multiplication. Wikipedia has a great entry on it. And you'll notice the operator for true matrix multiplication is we have a percentage sign, asterisk percentage sign. So we take that asterisk and we surround it or bracket it with percentage signs to get true matrix multiplication. The T function, very short function of the matrix will transpose it. We're going to use that. The diag function 
if we feed it a vector, will create for us a diagonal matrix. On the other hand, if we give it a matrix, it will extract the di diagonal vector for us. And then you can see here this notation, which is essentially similar to what we saw with data frames, is how we access elements from the matrix, right? Square brackets, row first, column second. I'll show you examples of that. And finally, uh, last thing I think you might want to know is call names and run names will give us names. I'll use that as well. So what I have here already keyed in before with the same assumptions that I showed you in Excel for this hypothetical portfolio. So I'm just going to hit control enter. And what I've done there is create four variables and they are all vectors, right? Vectors are the fundamental building block in R. You can see this here. Even my what I was my pairwise correlation matrix. I'm entering it here as a vector, and you can see here row underscore v, and my v to, to signify that it's a vector is a numeric vector of length 16. So it's not a matrix yet. Now I'll make it a matrix. I'm going to call it uh, just row for my matrix, and I use the matrix command, which accepts the vector and then just needs to know the dimensions of it. So I'm going to say four rows and four columns. And in this case, in fact, I don't need to say uh, the number of columns here is redundant information, but I'll leave it. And I've just created uh, the first matrix here so far in my example. You can see here data row is my matrix. How would I know? Well, numeric, I can see here it's got, as opposed to these uh, other values which are real which are one dimensional it has the two dimensions it's a matrix how does our treat or store that or what's the difference between a matrix and a vector well it's still fundamentally a vector right that's classic r if i take if i check the attributes of row my matrix what i find out is what i fundamentally have is a vector here with an attribute I covered attribute in a previous video. Attributes is an essential feature of R. Attributes are metadata, so they're data about an object. In this case, what's the data about the row object? The data is we have one attribute. Attributes are name value pairs. The name is dim, short for dimension. It's this attribute that makes my vector an array. My vector has dimensions. Here's the name. Here's the value. The value is a integer vector. In this case, it just has two values. So arrays are multi-dimensional. Two-dimensional arrays is a matrix, and that'll be the most common. So I only have the two dimensions. So this attribute, that's all it takes. This one attribute of dim for dimension and the dimensions, in this case, for rows, for columns, that makes my vector a matrix. Now I will take my volatilities and create the diagonal matrix out of it with that diag command, right? I'm giving diag is the function, sig is my vector of the four sigmas or volatilities, and what that gives me is my diagonal volatility matrix. And so you can see here's the four values that I gave it in the diagonal. Everything else is zero, and I'm getting the printout as the uh, just like the as the matrix that it is. Just as if I printed out row, I would see there's my correlation matrix betrayed by ones in the diagonal. So then now I'm just going to create my covariance matrix by multiplying the volatility diagonal by the correlation matrix by uh, the volatility diagonal matrix again, right? Volatility times correlation times volatility. But as I was doing it, even I reverted to that habit of using my scalar multiplier when I really want matrix multiplication. And then I get my covariance matrix. Let's take a look. We're expecting small values and we get small values. And let's see. Maybe I don't want, maybe I would like to give my columns and rows names. So I'm going to use those column names, Cover, and I'm going to feed it the stocks vector that I have right here. 
And I'm going to do the same for row names. Give it stocks as well. X, let's just run those two commands and take another look at covar. And we see there's my covariance matrix. Again, it's really a vector with that dimension attribute for rows for columns. And now let's just take a look at uh, extracting or retrieving elements. Right, if I want, let's say, row Cloudera, that's right here, the row, and column Bank of America, or BAC, right? I just give it row, column, and I get that value. That's the same as if I want the third row and second column. Or if I just want, let's say, all rows, I leave that blank. All rows in the column Bank of America, I get that vector, just as I could say for the row Cloudera, give me all columns leaving it blank, right? Which would be the same as give me the third row all columns, whoops, third row all columns, and I could say give me all rows, second column. I could also say give me all of the rows in the second and third column. And there we finally get a matrix look. See, all of I left this blank for the rows is blank. Give me all rows. And I would like call, combine columns two and three. So I get here a uh, matrix back that's uh, four rows by two columns. Okay, so last thing, let's go ahead and just compute that portfolio variance. And I have the weights, right? That is a numeric vector. That's my 25% for each of the four. I'm just going to make that into a matrix here using that matrix command, giving it the weights vector. And I'm going to give it one column. That's my weights. And then I'm going to create WTC underscore T that simply transposes that weights, right? So let's just take a look at weights and transposed weights. And I'll run those two together. And you can see here, that's my weights as a column vector. And here's the same value. Here's that same vector transposed into a row vector. So now I'm in a position to compute the variance of the portfolio. And then I'm going to start by that post multiplication, right, of... I'm going to take the covariance and matrix multiply it by my weights. That's my column vector. And then I'm going to come back here and pre-multiply that by the transposed uh, column vector, which is the, the row vector here. So that looks like my portfolio variance calculation. And let's just take the volatility and store into that, the square root of the variance. And let's see if we get the same value. And we do, uh, 1.76 or 1.55% same portfolio variance. But the point there was not to get the value so much to show you what I think the essential uh, matrix, uh, some of the matrix uh, functions and operators are. So if this video was helpful, subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified of the next video, which will include, of course, more introduction to our programming videos.